Good morning. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Kong, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Ottawa. And welcome to my This or That Thursday, um, also known as Reality Crafting. Um, so I'm just going to get set up. Just give me a second. I'm going to make sure that uh, I can see your comments because I'm going to set it up on my computer too, okay? And uh, if you're joining in live, I would love it if you could say hi and keep me company. It's always more fun when I'm not just talking to myself. Just waiting to see if it's streaming. Okay. There we go. All right. Hi, Tara. It's too bad that you have meetings this morning. How rude, Can, you know, work getting in the way of watching stamping. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. All right, I think I'm ready to go. <laughs> Hi, Sandra, you've got your chai latte. How nice. Uh, oh, that reminds me, I didn't get myself a glass of water, but anyways, it's fine. Um, okay, so yeah, so this is This or That Thursday, and basically I post two cards on my Facebook group um, on Wednesdays, and I ask anybody and everybody to choose which card they want me to make alive on Thursdays. Um, and uh, did you notice, like, I start off, uh, I started off with holding up my card that I'm going to make, because... Um, I noticed that my video library is just, you know, it's a whole bunch of thumbnails where all you see is my face in different poses and I can't tell which video is for what card. So I thought it might be a good idea to start holding up the card so that thumbnail includes, you know, then you can tell which one, um, which card is being made in that video. So, um, okay. So I have, uh, just a couple of things I wanted to talk about before I start making the cards, um, because I just haven't had enough time to post everything. Um, in my Facebook group lately, and uh, that's because it's dance competition um, week. So we have, um, Karis has a dance competition this weekend. She has a dance competition out of town next weekend. So it's busy, and uh, I just can't uh, can't seem to keep up. And plus, oh, don't forget, I have the, um, the annual, new annual catalog launch party on uh, Monday coming up too, and I want to... Um, want to prepare some stuff for that and I'm I'm uh, planning to have some uh, specials um, for the people who are watching my uh, live or the replay so stay tuned um, okay so uh, oh, the other thing I want to tell you guys about was the last chance product sale I know it's been going on for a few weeks now but we're in the last few days so if there's anything that you've been holding out for there's stuff that's got like really um, great discounts I have somebody who's just found the ice cream punch is uh, on 50% off and um, she's really eager to get that and um, yeah so there's there's still lots of um, great deals to be had but we are in the last few days the sale ends on the second and you should also know that um, there'll be price increases in the new annual catalog so your staples like um, cardstock ink pads um, paper um, what else did I see? Like there's a whole bunch of adhesives. Um, those are all going up. <laughs> Sandra's trying. Okay, yeah, you will try not to fall asleep. I know, I know, me too. I was just told that uh, we have to stay to the end on Sunday night, and I had we had never stayed to the end on Sunday nights before, and I hope it's not going to go late. So... Um, oh yeah, the blends markers. Yes, those will be going up in price too. So yeah, a lot of um, a lot of the uh, staple items are going up in price uh, as of the launch of the new catalog on May third. So Sunday night, I'll be putting in an order. If you have um, some staples that you want to pick up before they go up in price, let me know. I'm putting in my order that evening. Um, what else? 
Oh yeah. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was my New Horizons workshop. Um, I am having a workshop using the New Horizons stamp set and dies, and I just got them, so I'm really excited to uh, get that um, going after the catalog launch and dance comp. <laughs> and maybe I'll be able to squeeze in some time for Mother's Day too. I realized that the um, the end of the second uh, the next um, dance comp that's out of town. I'll be getting up at like, I don't know, four in the morning to do hair and makeup on Mother's Day. <laughs> so anyways, I'm I'm going to ask for a do-over for Mother's Day, but anyways, um, sorry, back, back to the New Horizons workshop. That's going to be June 11th, Saturday, June 11th. Um, so it'll be uh, perfect to uh, make some Father's Day cards, some masculine cards. So uh, I hope you'll join in. The registration ends on Sunday because I do have to get the uh, get the order in. We've all been there. <laughs> Sandra says, yes, we get it. I know. It's just on Mother's Day. I wanted to sleep in. Anyways. Um, okay, so that's it. That's it for the announcements. Um, let me switch over to my uh, to my desktop, and uh, I'll show you what we're making today. It was a close call today. I was like surprised. Um, it was three votes against two, so um, I was worried somebody else would vote at the last second, and then I'd have a tie. But fortunately, it's not a tie. <laughs> okay, so close your eyes. I'm just gonna switch the view. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. All right. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Is that good? That's too much, I think. You know, I did set this up and like it looked perfect when I set it up and now it's like not quite on. I don't know. I don't get this. Why is this not lined up? Okay. All right. Well, that's what it's going to have to be. Okay. So, um, these are the two cards I made for this week. So this one uses the uniquely artistic stamp set and I used what's called a spotlight technique. So if you wanted to see that being made, there's just lots of videos on how to use this technique and to do it yourself. And this one uses the teacup boutique, um, yeah, teacup boutique. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a new item in the uh, new annual catalog, and we'll make this card today. Um, <laughs> Sandra says, "Is it bad that I wouldn't be a mother if not for my kids?" But on Mother's Day, I know it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> I would like to have a little peace and quiet on Mother's Day from the people who made me a mother. So weird. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. So these are the products I used. I used Fresh Freesia and Garden Green for this. Um, and uh, these are scraps of paper that I was gonna, I'm going to be using. And then I used the DSP from the new Teacup uh, Boutique Suite. Um, it's really pretty. This is, uh, there's lots of different patterns, but it's, Generally, there's a lot of teacups in it. It's really cute. And, of course, there's the Cup of Tea stamp set. And I also got the new, uh, what do they call these? The Stylus Shapes dies, because I wanted the stitched shapes. I don't have, um, I don't have the uh, square shapes. And I have circles, but they don't have the stitching in them. So I really like the stitching. And uh, for the sentiment, that came from the Simply Succulents die set. And I used some embossing too, so I think we're ready to start moving on making the card. It's pretty simple. Um, it's not super hard to make. And it's just a regular card base, so it's a regular eight and a half by five and a half. Eight and a half by five and a half, yeah. Um, card base, so let's start with cutting that first. Oh, you missed those dies, eh? I saw them and I was like, I know I have circle dies already, but I really want the ones with the stitching. I think that little extra detail just really makes it. So yeah, I like them. 
So I'm going to take this as a regular 8.5 by 11 uh, sheet of cardstock, and um, I'm using my paper trimmer. It has measurements up here. I'm going to cut to 5.5 inches. I'm going to use the cutting blade to trim it or split it, and then I'll score it halfway at the four and a quarter using the scoring blade up here. Oh, am I off the screen? That's off the screen. Okay, scoring blade is here. Okay. And then uh, I actually had a piece of uh, white left over from when I made the first card, so I'm going to fold my card and uh, use my bone folder to just give it a really crisp edge, crisp fold, so then it lies really nice and flat. Okay, so that's my card base, really simple, and this is the, there's a layer here, so I don't know if you noticed, but there is a layer here that I put on just to give it some texture because it looked really um, plain, which is fine, um, but I like the extra texture there, so I'm just going to emboss this. Okay, so I need my stamp, uh, cut and emboss machine. So, the embossing folder for this is a 3D, it's called the Subtle 3D Embossing Folder, and I think this one is actually retired now, but there are similar ones, um, you know, uh, in their offering. So let's see. So it's a 3D one, so I just follow the directions. This base always tells you what um, sandwich to make, that's what they call it, which, um, which um, dies and what folders and what layers you need to put on. So with a 3D embossing folder, I need number one and four. So I have one and I need number four, which is this one. And I need to put my paper inside the folder. So where did it go? Here it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it in here. I'm lining it up because I want this, the lines to look straight up and down. So I'm going to fold it inside. The fold I always have to face the um, machine. So I put them in between and I run it through. Okay. So if you take it out now. So it's a really subtle kind of texture. It's hard to see on white, especially um, in this uh, screen there. Maybe now you can see. I don't know. There you go. All right, so that's the uh, texture. The other thing I need for my card is I did do a lot of die cutting for this one. So since I've got the machine here, I'm just going to die cut these pieces. So I die cut this using this square, the... Um, and it's a piece of uh, DSP from the Pattern Party um, DSP pack, which is in the 2021 to 2022 annual catalog um, for the Hostess, uh, um, not rewards, but you know, they're, they're products that you can only buy if you host a party or if you um, have a big enough order to qualify. So this one I felt matched really well with the DSP from the teacup um, DSP, what's it called? This is the Tea Boutique DSP. D DSP is designer series paper. Um, and the green in here is actually uh, the, is it Parakeet Party? What is it called? Yeah, it's the new green from the new in colors, but it actually is very close to uh, Granny Apple Green, which is what this is. And I felt like the new green was like a little bit too bright and I couldn't find a, I didn't have a DSP with it anyways, so I found this um, worked really well with it, so I decided to go with this. Um, and the other color I'm using is Garden Green, so I'm just going to die cut these. I had die cut that one, I had just cut a, a regular rectangle, so if you don't have these dies, you can just cut a regular rectangle, or sorry, a square um, to mat your uh, your images and it's totally fine but I like that um, you know when you die cut it with the with the squares you get that extra little stitching detail just so cool all right so 
let's see. Okay, so I'll, I'll yeah, that, and I'm going to cut. So there's on top of here. This is the D, the teacup is cut out of the DSP, and then I cut white, um, the white teacup outline with the dies here. So I tried several different ones, as you can tell, and decided that white was still the best. So here's the uh, die for that. So we'll, we'll die cut a few things. I still have to stamp, and then we'll have to die cut again. So we'll do um, do some now. So, okay. So let's see. I need a few more layers for my sandwich. I'm going to because I'm doing die cutting. I need one, two, and three. So this is two, and then I need these number three plates. Okay, so for this one, I need my stylish shapes dies. And I have two sizes. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use like the both of them, um, both the bigger and the larger square to cut them. The, the last time I had just cut the the larger uh, square just as a regular square. No, um, no die cutting. Let's just see if this fits. This is a little bit too small. This one, yeah, this one will fit. Okay, so this one will fit this one. I'm going to do them one at a time because I found that last time when I tried to rush it and try to squeeze on too much stuff, my dies shifted and then I accidentally dented one of my other dies. So for those of you who have a cut and emboss machine, I don't know, you've probably heard those that awful cracking sound when you put a die through sometimes, and it's because when you put it through straight and this whole edge goes underneath the roller or whatever it is, that's what makes that cracking sound because it's pushing up so much. So I always turn it, and it goes through much easier so that it's not one whole straight line of the die going through underneath the roller. Okay, so there's one. Whoops. Okay. And then I'll cut the smaller one. Yeah, that does, a snapping noise is really disconcerting, especially the first times you're using the uh, the cut and emboss machine. So that's why it's it's good when you can um, to turn it so that you don't get a whole side of the die going underneath all at once. So there's my two pieces, and then I'm going to die cut the, oops, the teacup. So the background of the teacup here is just DSP. I just cut it straight out of this. So, whoops, where did it go? So this is this die. So they match right on top of each other. Where did my other one go? Oh, here it is. So these are exactly the same size, right? Pretty much. So I can cut this one out, place this one on top. So that's what I'm going to do for this. I try to conserve paper as much as I can, so that's why I always line it up like really close to the edge. background of my cup. Oops. That's so cute. And then I need a scrap piece of white to do the other one. I have tons of scraps. Just on my table. Is this one fit? Yeah. Okay. 
So you see, I, I had like, I didn't like how this coloring had turned out. So I'm just going to turn it over. I'm going to reuse the other side and it's just perfect for this. Okay. Awesome that is. I just love, I don't know, call me weird, I just like popping out all these little pieces and then seeing this gorgeous little die cut emerge. Alright, perfect. All right, so I think we'll do a little stamping um, and then come back to this. So let me move this out of the way. Okay, so let's see. So I stamped the, um, the greenery here and I stamped a sentiment which actually is I think that one is from the simply succulents as well yeah because I wanted a single line and um, but we could uh, and I wanted to fit underneath here so that's why I chose that one so let me get my lattice out So I really like the Stamparatus for, for uh, stamping sentiments or things with, you know, really skinny lines because I always find that, you know, there's always a chance that I can miss um, pressing hard enough on a certain spot and then I'll, I won't have like the full impression of the stamp. And uh, so the Stamparatus lets me re-stamp. Just press down again because I, it keeps it in position. So. That way I can just stamp it again and save my image instead of having to get a fresh new piece of paper. Um, oh, I need more scrap. Hang on. Here we go. And I need my stamps. See, I tried all these colors while I was designing this card and I was like, does this work? Does this work? I still feel the white looks the best. Okay, so here's my stamp. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up my paper. Let's see, is it this way, this way? I think I'll do it this way. Okay, so the Stamparatus lets you also line everything up before you stamp it, which is really nice. Okay. Okay, so where's my garden green gone to? Just going to ink it up. Oh, yeah. So I put one of my other stamp pads underneath here because I saw it as a tip when I was um, attending on tour um, that uh, it's just the right height to stick underneath this pane and uh, so that I can ink up my image without having to hold it up under my hand with my hand. That looks good. I'm just going to wipe off that extra ink there accidentally. Let's see how this looks. That's pretty good. But you know what? I'm going to do it one more time just to make it a little bit deeper, just very lightly. Let's 
that's just even deeper. Actually, I, think I want that one. I think there's still a little bit more ink here. Okay, good enough. Perfect. So I'm going to clean off that stamp and I'll take it off my stamparatus. And then I'll also, at the same time, stamp my sentiment below it. And then we can die cut both of them out at the same time. Okay, so let's take this off. Put this away. And I'm going to get the succulents out. And I'm going to use this die to cut it out and this sentiment. So this is You've Been On My Mind. So with the cling stamps, you can't see through them to see uh, where they're lining up. But I use the grid lines. Like there's grid lines on this stamparatus even without the paper. The paper's separate, but you, you know, even without it, um, like if you were stamping with a cling, actually, I, I should be removing the uh, pad underneath because it's uh, high enough. It, the pad is when you're using the photopolymer stamps um, because they're not as thick as the cling stamps. So, let's see. Okay, so, um, but yeah, I just want to show you underneath the pad is a grid. Okay, but the grid is hand, this grid paper is handy when you're using the foam on top of that. Um, okay, so to line it up, I kind of visually line it up, but you know that the stickers and the actual image on the back don't always line up. So um, what I do, what I found is that once I put it on here, okay, so I line it up here on my paper. It's not a big deal if it's not straight, but when it is important that it's straight, I found that when I turn it over, I'll check it over here because there's grid lines on this pane as well, and I can tell if it's straight. Right? I can tell, looking at the image on the back, I can kind of eyeball whether or not it lines up with the straight lines here. As long as my paper is straight with the grid and I'm you know, lining up here, it should be pretty good for lining up straight. But this, in this case, I'm going, to be, um, I'm going to be cutting it out, so it's not a big, big deal. Okay, so this I am also doing in Garden Green. I have to be careful not to press too hard because with like the um, sentiments, they're very, very skinny, right? So if you press too hard, they get fat looking and kind of smudgy looking. So, and that's the perfect thing about the Stamparatus is that I'm not really pressing hard. And if it's not dark enough, I can just go back down and do it again. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add more ink. So I can stamp it again and give it a darker look without having to press too hard. Because there's no way I could line this up again to restamp without a stamparatus. Okay. There. So that's pretty good. I think I could do with a little bit more on the Y there. I'm going to press a little bit harder, but I don't want to press too, too hard. Oh, they have a laminated foam mat with a grid on it? Cool. I did not notice that. Thank you, Sandra. So many accessories. Um, okay, so I'm going to clean that off because I'm done with it. And then we'll cut it out. Whoops. All right. Where did I put? trying to figure out where I put stuff. I think that's half the battle of crafting is finding where you put everything because it just gets lost. Like I am normally an organized, tidy person, but my desk, you would never be able to tell because my desk is always like so messy when I'm crafting. All right. So let's cut these. Oh, I do have one more thing to stamp. Um, I have flowers. Oops, my tape is coming off. These magnets are super, super strong. <laughs> I feel like a weakling. Okay, I have to slide it off. And normally I would use these to pick it up, but it's ripped because I've used it so often, so I have to replace it. But uh, yeah, these are super, super strong magnets. 
Okay, so I need the pad back because the teacup stamps are actually photopolymers, so I have to uh, have the pad in there. All right, so I need the flowers. So I had stamped in the set. There are these flowers, and they actually could be stamped like right on top, um, but I chose to die cut them because there is a die for it. So I'm gonna do this. So you have to be careful not to wiggle it because the die is in exactly that shape. And uh, if I stretch it or move it, it might not line up properly for cutting. So. I think I, uh, I think I had two of these big flowers. Okay, so we'll just stamp these ones first. And I need fresh freesia. Oh, I need to put my magnets down. Let the other one go. Let's just make sure they're not in the way. Okay. There we go. I'm going to clean that off. I'm always afraid that it might accidentally touch something and then wreck the card. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm definitely going to stamp that again. I want them to be more, a deeper kind of freesia. Okay. Perfect. And then I'm going to stamp that big one one more time because I think I want to use an extra flower. So I'll take these one away. And I'll move this. So this one I can stamp maybe over here. Again. All right, I think I'm all done with my stamping now. All right, so let's move on to cutting them out. I'm just going to put away my ink pads before I ink my elbow. machine. Okay. So let's get out the dies. So this die goes here. And let's, let's put this here. So I want it to go through like this so that my sentiment die doesn't go in like that and he'll snap we'll make that snapping sound that I don't like so I'm just gonna line that up looks pretty good this one All right, and oh, okay, so I'm gonna do those two first because this die is gonna sit on top of that if I don't do it properly. Okay. So if you notice, you don't have to line up the plates exactly, it doesn't matter. Oh no, I moved it. Rats. See, reality crafting. At least I didn't cut it yet. See, I didn't think I had trembly hands, but when I go to put these down and line them up, I feel like my hands are trembling. Okay, I think that looks okay. Okay. 
All right. See, not even lined up. It doesn't. What? Third time's a charm. All right. Do not move. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that one's done and I have to do the flowers. Oh look, I just noticed that it actually comes with two flower dies. I don't know why I didn't notice that before. I did this twice last time because I thought there was just one. Okay. So this came out well, despite my efforts <laughs> twice moving them. Okay, so here's this one. Oh, the magnetic cladding plate, for sure. I wouldn't mind trying that. It's just, it's it's uh, kind of pricey. I looked it up after the last time, and it's like $39. So it's a self-healing mat, it says. So I don't know, like, is that, does that mean that it's going to last way longer than these mats? Because, like, you can see how scratched this one is from all the die cutting I've been doing. And, you know, it'll have to be replaced eventually. I don't know if the magnetic one, because it's self-healing, which this one is not, if that means it would last a whole lot longer. Hi, Maureen. Thanks for uh, joining in. I don't know if you have any experience with the uh, magnetic cutting plates, but um, I was just wondering if they last any longer than the uh, the regular cutting plates because they are pricier. They're $39, so I haven't uh, tried those yet. So let me see if I can line this up. I think that looks good. That's the one. Okay. See? Let's hope I can get this through without moving it. All right. Let's go. So all my little flowers are cut out now. Try not to lose any of the dyes in the process. Okay. All right. Let's just get those flowers off. And I won't, hopefully won't sneeze and lose them. Maureen, you're not sure either, eh? So you, you haven't used the magnetic die cutting plate. Okay. All right, so let me find all the pieces now. So here's the card base and the background, textured background layer. And my teacup. My two mats. Where's the other one? and the other teacup and my greenery and my sentiments. Okay, for this, we definitely need, I need to have my tweezers because I can barely pick up this little flower. <laughs> Just have those handy. Okay, so I'm gonna glue the, uh, the textured piece on first. And I tend to use glue with the textured pieces because I feel like like the uh, the stamp and seal is probably fine. I just feel like the glue would probably because it's um, not a smooth surface. It just works a tiny bit better. But I'm sure it's fine with the stamp and seal. But this is what I use. Okay.
So I'm just centering it on the front of the card. Okay. Um, and these are just centered as well. So I'm just going to adhere these together. And this I will just use my stamp and seal. needs to be assembled too. So this just goes on top of here. Let's see. And I'm going to need to glue that. I could have used um, an adhesive sheet, but uh, it's not a big deal. I don't mind gluing the die cut. It's, it's not a big, huge piece that has to be done. So I just put dots of glue because I don't want it uh, all squishing out. So, And I find that it's easier to control with just dots of glue. rather than trying to draw lines or anything. I know there's another side to this glue stick, like you can, there's a broad side, but I've never used it. I really just prefer using the thin side to the, put my dots down. Oops. I have one dot there that's off. Just checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, it's not a big deal. All right. I'm just going to line this up and put it right on top. There. Okay. Oh, I forgot to die cut one more thing. I just realized, so here, when I put my card together, I thought this was really white and it doesn't um, didn't stand out enough for me. So I just die cut another piece of the same tag in garden green and I cut it in half and I just brought them out a little bit on the sides so that it framed my sentiment to give it some color. Maureen says the broad side is good for scrapbooking when using larger pick. Sorry, I lost the train of thought. The broadside of, um, I'm not sure what we're talking about. <laughs> That's the thing, if I didn't read your comment right when I was talking about whatever it was, then I lost the train of thought. Um, maybe you can fill us in. Um, okay, I'll have to cut that in a second. All right, so let's finish assembling, let's see, this. So this was flat on the page. So I'm just going to put it on the upper... Um, section so I'm just going to put the glue on it oh the broad side of the glue yes you're right yeah absolutely yes I'm just going to quickly check if I have enough room for my flowers. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I get this thing with glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room to move it down or up after you've placed it. Yeah, I think that's enough room for my flowers. I just didn't want them to be off the card. 
Okay, so this was on dimensionals. Let me get my dimensionals out. And we'll put them, pop it up on dimensionals. You know what? I'm wondering if I should just use my little ones. I want to put two here. Then we'll put them here. And this is a little bit fat. Like, I feel like it's going to stick out. So you know what I've done? I think I actually cut it in half last time. Because the, uh, the handle is a little bit narrow. So I didn't want it to stick out. So I just cut it in half. And I'll split it between top and the side. There. Maybe one more. There we go. That's lots. Okay. I'm going to take off all the backings and I'll stick it on. So this I placed around here. And then this is going to go just behind it. And I'm going to also pop it up on dimensionals. I'm saving the gluing of the flowers for afterwards because, uh, well, I just figured it would work. And again, this is really skinny, but I do still want to support it. Like if it goes through the mail, I don't want it to get flattened, but I don't know. It's probably fine, but I'll just cut this in half again. Whoops. And stick it on. I'll just stick this one here since I have it. Okay, almost there. Oops. Oh, <laughs> I just flicked the uh, whole, all the backings over my lap. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to slide it just underneath. Okay, the flowers I'm going to stick on with glue, so that's, I'm definitely going to need tweezers to do this. Okay. So I'm going to stick, one of the ones I have to stick on, I want to stick on the tip of there. I'm just, uh, I think I'm just going to put right in the middle and that's it. So I'm just putting a dot of glue in the center of each and uh, and then I'll stick them on. Okay. So I want one at the tip of this branch. Oh, I know why I wanted to wait because I didn't know exactly where the glue is going to end up and if it squishes out because this is raised it won't matter but if I had it on a, the flat on the paper and I wanted to do it beforehand then it might have stuck to the paper that's why I did it afterwards okay uh, actually I'll put this one here as a smaller one it doesn't have to be at the end of a branch it's just wherever you feel like it There, 
these ones I have to position. Oops. This one, I think I put it over here. Or would it go over here? Yeah, maybe over here. Whoops. There we go. There. All right. Okay, so I just have my uh, sentiment to deal with, and I need one more piece of uh, garden green, so I'm going to cut that out first. I'm put that aside, make room for my cut and emboss machine. So, like I said, I just cut this in half, right? Because if I line it up, obviously you can't see it. So I'm just going to cut it in half. And then I'll just glue this down on top. So I'm going to use my tear and tape for this. So then it just frames my sentiment, gives it a little bit of color so that it's not quite so plain looking. That side and then this side. I'm trying to line it up. The same. Oops, too far in. Okay. All right, and so I'm going to stick this on. Here, so I'm going to use the tear and tape again. See, I tell you, this always happens. Nobody calls me on my phone unless I am in a live. Always. And I forgot to mute it. Like, yet last week I remembered to silence it and to mute it. Put on Do Not Disturb or whatever. And this week I forgot. And I'm telling you, nobody calls me on my phone. We, I, I t primarily text people. And like, yeah, I got, I think it was a one of those telemarketing, looked like a 1-800 number. So let's pop this on just underneath and if I'm just going to center it. Cool. All right, so I think the last thing is to uh, put on my twine. I put on a little bit of, I wanted a little bit more texture, so I just added like uh, a little bow there. So I'm just going to measure it out without cutting it first. I'll make the bow and then cut it. Okay. 
It's a bit twisted. All right, that looks about the right size up. So I just want it to go there. Just gonna trim this. And I'm gonna use a half a glue dot because it's, the knot is so small. So I'll just take Half the glue dot. And stick it on. And that's it. It's a little bit long. I'm going to cut it just a little bit. There we go. And that's the card for today. I didn't uh, I didn't do anything with the inside just yet. I haven't gotten that far, but um, anyways, I'm really pleased with how this uh, this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, I'm not going to be doing a, uh, a this or that Thursday next week because um, I'll be busy packing. I think to uh, go to the dance comp that's out of town um, next weekend, but I will be back the following week. Okay, so that is the card for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and um, we'll probably do some more teacup stuff later because I don't think I've made use of the entire thing yet. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so have a great day, everybody. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks for joining in.